Hello, babies. You miss me? I miss you. Yeah. Stop that there. Nah. It's a couple. It's about a day or so removed from the Wednesday warfare, and I understand I'm coming in late in this thing. But you gotta understand, I have to work, and work prevents me from doing things on time sometimes, especially at the most crucial time. So, unfortunately, I was not able to watch the shows until today. But that is neither here nor there. We're gonna get we're gonna start on the first of two video uploads. Maybe it could be the vice versa, depending on how fast it takes to load up. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this out the way because it is I, the Duke of Danger, the Deacon of Destruction. I am the bringer of doom, gloom, and everything that goes boom, baby, down on my D. And I'm ready to give you this all elite review. So I'm going to be changing the title of my uh, reviews for each show that I do because although I want to keep on with the shooting thing, it's not it's not gonna work so we're gonna do it differently so for right now this is gonna be the all elite this is gonna be the elite level review yeah the elite level review for for aew and i'm gonna be speeding through this not caring much for splat promos and again because i'm doing this slightly remove my memory of matches could be a bit meh but we get this thing started with a legit slobber knocker. I'm talking about we're going to have Private Party versus the Hung Bucks coming out from the debut where the Bucks themselves had kind of gotten their ass whizzipped at the end of the night by the Inner Circle. Who is this Inner Circle? We'll talk about it in a bit. So, back kick. The 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 begin the match starts off slow, but it revs up very quick and they get at it. Both team, high flyers, agile, the young bucks. Enough being enough said. Their name alone lets you understand the caliber match you're about to bring. And then private party was showing up to show the fuck out. And for most people, including myself, we all probably just consider this is gonna be an easy win for the Bucks, but no, it was for a challenge. And here's the thing. Because the Bucks, who will be ta who are taking the lead to basically, you know, get it started the way they only know how, Private Party was answering them back. And it took Matt and Nick really going out there to try to stop them. But I don't know. I don't know. I guess Private Party did their research this day because they got the dub, they got the win out there. Stopping the melt the uh, melter driver from initiating. Actually, the setup into the melter driver itself was the biggest highlight out of everything because I've never seen that setup started. Now, granted, it didn't go through, but it was still it was still a nice setup into it. Just gotta say it, it was bombastic. Uh, last week, I believe on my SmackDown review, I gave my first uh, A plus match uh, descriptor with the tag match between. No, actually, no, I gave that to the Hell in a Cell opener with uh, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Well, we get it two times in this week because I have a five because that tag match starting off the tag team tournament, it's it set the standard in my opinion for who I'm looking at. Private party got the win over the Bucks in fantastic fashion. It was a great, great match. A plus, nut bad. Set I, I was I was just there. Um, I know that following up that match, I want to say we had Dar we had Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc. Now this one, cool was a cool off match. Um, it's interesting that this match was going to set up uh, a number one contendership, uh, and this is something that I that I mentioned in a previous video where I have concerns with this type of with this type of uh, matchmaking. If you have a champion, and then you decide that you're gonna put a random competitor in between that champion and a, and a major match coming on because we got we got Jericho and we have Cody going into oh yeah <sighs> forgive me it's a late review we got Cody and Jericho going at it for the belt at full gear but in this, but in this match outcome somebody's gonna get a, content, a top number one condition is going to be number one contender for the AEW belt next week. Now that my problem is, is that this is something that you do when you don't have a designated, um, 
a designated major match setup, such as, in, let's say, with AEW only planning to have four different pay-per-views for the year, they're going to have, you know, we're going to do uh, one pay-per-view every quarter. Well, if you're going to do it like that, then having these little matches in between work, except when you have that have the pay-per-view coming up in maybe a month's time. <gasps> so we have full gear coming up. It's already going to be Cody Rhodes versus Jericho. Now then, why are we going to have a number one? Why are we going to have a world title match the uh, next week when that can be when that can definitely interfere with plans? Granted, it's the problem that I have is the fact that it comes off as being an off season that next week Jericho is going to win because we're not expecting well, nobody expecting Darby Allen to take this. This is going to be a be a, a enhancement match for himself, which is fine. I would I, I want Darby to get up there. He is. Are, in my opinion, one of the next uh, big things to come from AEW, but it's it's just it's just a bad setup. And obviously, I said Darby, so I fucked up my own match. But yeah, no, it was Darby. It was Darby versus Jimmy Havoc. It was an okay match, a little slow. But the biggest takeaway from it is that Darby is just a, is pretty much is still pretty freaking over. He's still unique as hell. Great with the cell, Jimmy Havoc. He's a tough some he's a tough he a tough SOB, but you know, this wasn't his night. Darby got the win. I will go ahead and give it an average match. And honestly, I'm gonna leave just leave it at average because like I said, it was it was cool, but it wasn't there. Um in between, I wanna say that we had Yeah. So after that match, I believe we had Jericho come out with uh uh Jake Hagar with Santana Ortiz and Sam Guevara, where they are finally addressing what the hell happened on the debut episode. Um, in the fact that these five guys came together to be a new unit. And Jericho was Jericho was basically setting the tone. He was got he was doing a he did a hell of a promo for those guys, you know. He basically put up he put over Santana and Ortiz saying, you know, yeah, I know what they did here, but guess what? These guys, these ain't the same guys as where you saw them beforehand. They're here. They're meaner. They're about to get everybody up. Great. He's over there putting up Sammy Guevara as a young, like, as a young, sexy Spanish heartthrob. Do what you do. I get it. That's work. That works for what Sammy is. That's cool. I work with that. But the 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 biggest deal besides the fact that they're all on his list, he brought back the list and revitalized it for new uses. Good shit on you, Jericho, the real chameleon. Um, but when I got to Jake Hagar, that's where that was where my favorite part of it because obviously for for some of us for those for some of us who do know Jake Hagar is in Bellator and he is currently undefeated. Now that is good. That's good for right now because you know we're gonna go off of his legit MMA background right now to get him a little bit more clout. Since he is the big bruiser of the group and needs to go undefeated for some time. Now, that's not necessarily addressing his Bellator situation, but as far as his role with Jericho's new group, it's needed to. But also, whenever you know he was putting them over and people and people started doing the weed people chat, he they let it chill and sit for a second. And Hagar, he didn't give in. He just stood there, playing his role, enforcer. And then, you know, Jericho had to come in and say, look. That when that happened, well, it was great. But guess what? That's there now. No more. Finito. So we the people is officially done because J.K. Gar is a new man. And this is, as I like to say it, Jericho's in a circle. That's who these guys are. Which it works. For, it, again, it works. It definitely gives us something to build as far as with the elite for a nice little. That's a nice little. Storyline to get going on that we can all get a wrap around and then work out towards. That's fine. Perfect. Cool. I fucked with it. You know? Uh, that's how I went. The promo was great. Handled their business. And I'm loving that it's all staying in the ring. We're not getting any real backstage segments. Perfect. So I want to say the next match that we get is uh, Brie Priestley and oh my god, I can't remember her name. And and Riho's teak mentor, the Josh, the legendary Joshi who came out in Freddy in a Freddie Mercury garb versus Riho and Doctor Baker DMD. Got to put got to put add a little bit on. And 
the match itself, it was a cool little, it was a cool little tag match. You know, it was, it's it's done it's done for. And the main focus still remain the whole issues between Bree and Britt, which fucking great because that's that's getting me something to build on while Riho, who is going to be getting ready to have a match, a, champ, a women's championship match. <sighs> With Brie Baker next week, is going to be on the focus. Now I'm wondering if this is going to be a situation where we're going to have Brie Priestley either coming in to interfere during the match or after the match. Now, I feel that, re that give, here's my feel for all of AEW's current champions that are, that are and are going to become established, I need them to hold on to the belts at least till after the first pay-per-view. I feel like Jericho needs to go into the pay-per-view holding the belt. Riho definitely should hold on to her belt before then. Maybe not give her too frequent of a match. You know, do a little bit less and more with her. And then wait and see what happens with the AEW. Okay, Mr. Matthew. <sighs> I'm sorry, people. I'm doing this late. I'm doing it for you. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I definitely would love for them not to make to start doing early title changes. I still feel like they have a system that they're still working together. But on the plus side, like I said, um, that was that was a it was a cool little match. It, it worked before it did. I would give it a B plus. Nothing bad. No, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. In fact, yeah, it definitely earns a B plus moniker because. <laughs> Just because it, it, every everybody kind of got a good bit of shine, although I feel like Bree Priestley needs a bit more clout. And honestly, the biggest takeaway the fact that Aubrey Hepburn is still hella hella over as a fucking ref, aka Go Girl Hepburn. Um, afterwards, we have the big tag match that got set up last week following the show on a the show the main show of Dynamite and was put together from uh, BTE, which was. Uh, Dustin Rhodes and Heyman Page versus Chris Jericho and nope, I'm sorry, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself because we had the match that I was actually most excited about and I can't I'm not completely forgot my brain is shutting down. Uh, it was Sean Spears versus John Moxley. John Moxley having his debut match in AEW and here's how I feel about it because. It started hot and it sim and it came down a bit, but it didn't go down to a simmer. It just kind of got to a midway point, which is what I'm fine with. Given just given the, just given the, who these two men are, I felt like the match needed to start with a bang. It, it, it started with a hell of a bang, like no lockup, straight to the hits. Um, unfortunately, every uh, it looks like Sean Spears is a. Uh, uh, heat has kind of has really cooled down, more than likely following that loss to Cody, and we haven't really seen too much of him. Um, he's still doing the chairman of the board, the chairman of the board stick. <sighs> Terrible. He's still, he's still the chairman of AEW, which is funny because he is the second person uh, in TNT history that I'm aware of to actually pull the chairman stick. The first one going back to the pocket back in the day when he was letting you know, Yes, every, yo, 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 it's the chairman of the board coming down. Yeah, yeah, take it back. Now then, he was doing, I, I don't know if he was doing that before. It was official that they were going to go to TNT, but still at the same time, I'm liking it. So I'm going a, I'm to a give, give it a little ding. So, like I said, it starts out with a heavy banger. They're going at it, beating each other. Fucking Tully Blanchett still being a fucking twat. Interfering. Uh, which definitely holds down for me as I feel towards Sean. I, I, I don't feel that Tully is adding enough for Sean due to his excessive interference, but but he still comes off. He's still a slight chicken shit heel for it, which is fine. But for my he has no problem meeting up him and, and getting ready to whoop Tully's ass. So you know that goes through. I, I like I said, I enjoyed the match, although it shot below my expected standards. But nothing for me to really complain about. That one, I'm gonna go ahead and give a solid A minus. Like I said, it didn't get cold; it just stayed warm. John Moxley got his win, although not with his not with his prettiest looking um, par paradigm shift or Death Rider. <laughs> it just depends on where you're at, I guess. No, no, no. Actually, I feel like. That could have been the paradigm shift, but it's the Death Rider when he gets the real elevation. When he gets the real elevation on it. Either way it goes, 
That was a solid match. And then we got to go and get ready for the main event of the night. We have the, the natural Dustin Rhodes coming with that boy, that country boy, that country strong hangman page going up against Sammy Guevara, the sexy Spanish hard girl, and La Champion, Mr. A little bit of the bubbly himself, the AEW World Champion Chris Jericho, and hey, they they all they they perform the way they did. If anything, I think I got I got more of a showing from Dustin in this one, really showing that he can still go. And hey, man, still is still is impressive. He's still hanging. I I I don't know what it is. I feel like. Hey man needs to give me a bit more. He needs a bit more developing before he can actually go for the upper mid card spot. But when he does, he'll be gold. Tim Guevara. What can I say? I praise. I want to say I praise him in the first in his first episode, and he does his damn thing here. He's sticking it out. He's not, you know, going in and taking those L's. And Jericho, Jericho, you can't really talk. That, you can't really say too much bad about him. The man knows what he's doing. His his psychology is down pretty packed. He, you know, he he comes in. Does what he does. Almost as if, you know, he was the best at what he does. And, you know, he comes in with the Judas effect. The Judas effect is actually starting to grow on me as a finisher. But we get that. They get the win. Uh, the inner circle, you know, is kind of riding on top. And then they start the post-match beat-ups. They start beating on. They start getting on Hangman. Switch over to Dustin. You know, Dustin's getting whooped, so then Cody comes out. I believe that I believe that Hangman and Jake Hagar take it outside the rope so nice, you know. Uh Jericho, Guevara, and uh Ortiz, uh Ortiz and Santana, you know, beating up on Cody. Then MJF comes out, and we are all still expecting that expecting MJF to turn on Cody. I'm expecting it, you're expecting it. We're waiting to see when it's gonna happen, but the fact is it's gonna happen, so. He comes out and he doesn't he doesn't join the inner circle. He doesn't turn. He's out there helping Cody. Gets his ass pumped out, but it's enough for the numbers to start shifting down. Cause then afterwards we get the bucks coming down. And that's like clearing that's clear that's that's taking it down. The inner circle is over here, you know, getting weak. Now, for most people that would feel like it's a bad idea to let this newly formed group kind of get their ass whooped, but it is very much necessary. Because at the same time, you know, like I said, it's nice to have a new group here, but we cannot let the elite come off as weak. And, you know, even after Jericho started taking a bit of a lick and he got his way out, you know, he cut, he, uh, he did it. He, he, uh, got out and then fucking Torby Allen comes riding down the ramp on his board, slams into Jericho. They go at it. They go at it. I'm just like, what is this madness? And you know, it, like I said, it was a good, it was solid. It was great for the show. It did what he needed to do. Everybody got the point going across. Um, we are starting to see some branches with stories. Uh, Pac was out for commentary on that, uh, on the, on the Moxley, or on the Moxley and Spears match. Uh, he actually came out later after Kenny came out with a freaking barbed wire bat and broom, tossed the bat to Back to uh, Moxley to get it going, and then fucking Pac comes out and you know hits Omega from behind. And John Moxley is above picking off scrap, uh, picking straps. He doesn't do it, so he just lets it slide. So you know, it's a uh, it was rough. It it, it, got, it like I said, it was solid, but we're seeing future building. Pac has a has a bite has an issue to prove with the fact that he's not even in possible contendership or in line for a title match. Which is gonna be great once he gets to that point. The so far with all of the building with storylines and everything, they're get it's getting off the ground. Like it, like we're getting good ideas and not forcing anything. Some things are developing. We're seeing where it goes. We still got the tag turn to start setting in stone. Uh, new few, new feuds. Not everybody has everything going, but with the way they're doing it, I'm still liking it. I'm definitely loving the concept of actually showing the dark matches and making it a YouTube exclusive. So that way, you know, everybody can get shot on some form, in some way, shape, or form. And I haven't seen the numbers yet for the viewership, but, you know, I hope that it definitely can help get them bigger to where all their stars can get viewing. So, um, with the final match, with the final match tonight, I'm going, uh, I'm going to go with a solid, with a solid B plus. It was cool. They would have done the post match definitely brings it up to the B plus and all in all for the show itself. I'm going to say the show was, the show was good. Solid. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, 
not better than what was going on with NXT, even though I do have some gripes with it. But my final grade for the second episode of AEW, for AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not ashamed to say it. A minus. It was an above average show. There was all, there was still plenty to go. No, not much of anything for me to complain about. Um, like I said, there was one one nice cooling part, but it started off blazing hot. It ended with it ended going back up. So as opposed to a slant, we you know got a bit of a U going. I like that. You can upswing it and actually more or less kind of in the shape of an M or even a V, depending on how you feel about. Deshaun Smears and Moxley match because it just did it didn't feel it didn't go the way I felt it should have completely but it was still solid you know what I'm saying so like I said the final show a minus really good it's it was a good show but I gotta be honest NXT got me this week this was in it this was definitely the week for NXT both on the in rings and for the stories going, I'm gonna go ahead and get get that into the next video. I'll probably be dropping it sometime later, but soon. Before I do the SmackDown review, again, I'm sorry about this. Work is work comes first, so if I have to end up working much later than I tend to, then it's just, and it happens on a day when I need to record, then I'm just gonna be late. But anyway. You guys stay out there, stay lovely. For anybody who happens to be still be watching my videos, I appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, talk to me, to, uh, help me get something. I'm about to start linking my Twitter page in. I'm about to start pushing the channel on my actual Twitter that I switched up. Um, thank you for watching. This has been the Elite Level Review. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Peace.